हेलो ऑल वी आर लर्निंग द लेक्चर सीरीज ऑन फ्लूड मैकेनिक्स एंड फ्लूड एंड टर्बो मशीनरी एंड वी आर इन पार्ट नंबर थ्री ऑफ प्रेशर मेजरमेंट सो बेसिकली इन द फ्लूड मैकेनिक्स लेक्चर सेशंस बिफोर दैट वी हैव अपलोडेड मेनी वीडियोज रिलेटेड टू रेफ्रिजरेशन साइक्रोमेट्री एंड वी आर ऑल्सो गोइंग टू वन बाय वन सी द वेरियस कंसेप्ट इन रेफ्रिजरेशन ऑल्सो नाउ वी आर लर्निंग लेक्चर सीरीज ऑन फ्लूड मैकेनिक्स एंड टर्बो मशीनरी एंड हेलो माई नेम इज सावन मानी आई एम असिस्टंट प्रोफेसर इन डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ मैकेनिकल इंजीनियरिंग पद्मभूषण वसंतराव दादा पाटिल इंस्टिट्यूट ऑफ टेक्नोलॉजी बुदगांव basically uh, in this uh, lecture session uh, we have seen the basics of fluids properties of fluids then pro problems on the various properties of fluids and then we are in the next session of the uh, fluid mechanics theory which is the pressure measurement and now we are learning the uh, part number 3 of the pressure measurement in last lecture uh, we have seen the various types of uh, manometers which are used for the measurement of pressure like uh, the piezometric tube then a simple u tube manometer and the single column manometer and as differential manometer was a large and huge concept and mechanical gauges so in this lecture we are going to conduct the fourth type of manometer that is different differential manometer and then we are going to see the various types of mechanical gauges used for the measurement of pressure so going to our uh, first uh, slide also before uh, i would like to uh, thank to all of you for the great response we are receiving on our youtube channel plus i will uh, also uh, just uh, give a kind request to all the those who are viewing this videos to please uh, subscribe our youtube channel for receiving more and more information of our videos so going to the first slide uh, the fourth type is is mentioned here for the differential manometers because uh, first three types are already covered in the previous uh, lecture so fourth type is a differential manometer a differential manometer is used to measure the difference in measure pressures between two points in a pipes or in diff two different pipes in its simplest form a differential manometer consists of a u tube containing a heavy liquid whose uh, two ends are connected to the points whose difference of pressures is required to be found out so now see up till now we have seen that only one point was connected to the point at which the pressure is to be measured and the other point was open to atmosphere so uh, here uh, the requirement or the way in which the pressure will be measured is both the points will be connected to the uh, uh, for creating the difference between the pressure at suppose points a and b are there so both points will be collected uh, connected with the both the limbs will be connected uh, with the help of this manometer and then the difference in pressure will be measured so the following are the most commonly used type of a differential manometer so there are two types of differential manometers one is a u tube differential manometer and second is an inverted u tube differential manometer so now we will see the first type of uh, differential manometers that is u tube differential manometers Yeah, remember guys that in in this particularly there are two cases so we we'll, we are going to take the first case before that we will see the actual uh, diagram first of a, a differential manometer now you can see this point a whose pressure is to be measured is connected here that is a pipe a and here uh, second is uh, connected at point b so the a and b will be the difference of the points or the points at which the pressure difference is to be created so that we can measure and this water or any another liquid will be present in point a and b and the manometric liquid will be the heavier liquid like uh, example like mercury or alcohol so now uh, what we are going to uh, locate here is uh, we have to measure the pressures at point a and b so the difference in the levels that, that is from uh, the level difference between the datum line up to the height of the higher mercury or higher liquid manometric liquid will be h and h1 will be the rise of the height of the uh, of the particular level of the manometric liquid to the point b uh, to the point b level of the pressure measurement now we'll see Uh, the first case is a and b points are connected at the same level and they are containing the same liquid 
means a is suppose at a distance uh, x then that b also is at the distance x so these two are at the same levels so here case 1 the figure shows a differential manometer whose two ends are connected with two different points a and b at the same level and containing same liquid so we will see now how the equation has to be uh, found out because the liquid is same means if a is containing water b will also be containing water h is the difference of mercury levels that is heavy liquid in the u tube so this is the h value that is difference in the levels of the heavy liquid the here here the pink color is showing the heavy liquid h1 is distance of center of a from the mercury level in the right limb that is the distance of the center of a similarly it will be the difference at center b also s1 is equal to s2 specific gravity of liquid at two points a and b because as the uh, two points are containing same liquid so the specific gravities will be also equal S is specific gravity of heavy liquid or mercury in the U tube. This pink colored liquid, which is shown, this is the manometric liquid. So it will have an another specific gravity because it will be heavier. So therefore, it will be S. Then H A is pressure head at A and H B is the pressure head at B. So these are the two pressure heads at points A and B respectively. Now we know that pressure in left limb and right limb above the datum level are equal. So how to calculate the pressure in limb uh, H or the or the limb A? pressure limb in the uh, pressure head in the uh, left limb the pressure head in the left limb that is a will be equal to h a plus now see two liquids are there in the first limb here so that will be into bracket h plus h1 that or h1 plus h into bracket complete it will be s1 that is the manometric fluid the gravity of the particular fluid in the point a so see the equation again pressure head in the left limb is equal to h a that is the head uh, that is pressure head at point a plus into bracket h1 plus h that is the height over the uh, up to point a into s1 because it is consisting the liquid of the uh, uh, pressure which to which to be measured then pressure head in the right limb right limb will be equal to again h b because pressure head at point b plus now two liquids are there if you observe this uh, limb that is right limb there are two liquids manometric liquid and actual liquid whose pressure is to be measured so h1 s1 plus h2 s2 or we can say h1 s1 plus h into s because s is the specific gravity of manometric liquid and h is the height of the manometric liquid in the right limb so the equation becomes hb plus uh, h1 s1 and h into s So now uh, equating the two equations first, H A plus H one minus H one plus H S one is equal to H B H one S one plus H S. <coughs> We can find the equation of H A minus H B equal to. So taking H B here. Uh, h1 s1 plus hs minus this value will be the total will be minus so minus h1 plus h s1 so again uh, multiplying in bracket h1 s1 plus hs minus h1 s1 plus hs1 so um, positive h1 s1 and negative h1 s1 gets cancelled and we get hs my plus hs1 so here uh, directly we can write here is h into bracket s minus s1 so it is only the difference between the specific gravities of the both the fluids so difference in pressure head equal to h a minus h b equal to h into s minus s1 then going to the next case that is case number 2 uh, now here you can see that b is at a different level and a is at a different level and also they may be considering the different liquids also so here you can see the figure shows the differential manometer whose two ends are connected with two different points that is a and b at different levels also and also containing different liquid so a will be containing different liquid and b will be containing different liquid so if you refer the diagram here h1 is uh, related with the height of the liquid uh, uh, in left limb h is the height of manometric liquid in right limb and h2 is the height of the mano uh, on the liquid in the right limb at point b so let h is difference of mercury levels in the u tube h1 is distance of center of a from mercury level in the left limb h2 is distance of the center of b from mercury level in right limb s1 is specific gravity of liquid in pipe a s2 is specific gravity of liquid in pipe b and s is the specific gravity of heavier liquid or mercury h a pressure head at a and h b is pressure head at b now we will see how to find the various types of pressures so pressure head in left limb again it will be equal to h a 
प्लस इंटू ब्रैकेट एच वन एंड एस एंड इंटू एस वन इयर सो इट विल बी द इक्वेशन विल रिमेन एज इट इज एज वॉज देयर इन द लास्ट केस ना वॉट विल हैपन टू द सेकेंड प्रेशर एड इन द राइट लिम एच बी प्लस नाउ हियर एच टू इज देयर एंड एच टू इज ऑल्सो देयर सो एच टू इंटू एस टू एंड एच इंटू एस सो हियर यू कैन सी एच बी प्लस एच टू इंटू एस टू प्लस एच इंटू एस डिपेंडिंग अपॉन दीज टू लेवल्स इन द राइट लिम Again, equating the pressure heads, we get H A plus H one plus H S one is equal to H B H two S two H S. So H A minus H B will be equal to this remain as it is H two S two plus H S minus H one plus H S one. So again, multi multiplying in the bracket, we are getting uh, actual values of the products of the uh, H and S. So we get here is H into bracket S minus S one. Plus H two S two minus H one S one. So the difference of pressure heads at A and B, where they are at uh, different levels and they are containing different liquids, H A minus H B will be equal to H into S minus S one plus H two S two minus H one S one. Now inverted U tube manometer. Now see the actual manometer's uh, uh, dimension is directly inverted in order to find the various uh, amount of vacuum pressures or we can say negative pressures. So that also uh, condition will be varied. Again, left limbs and right limbs were varied. So now uh, point A is at the lower side and point B at higher side, and uh, this is the uh, manometric liquid which is shown. So this type of manometer is used for measuring difference of two pressures, where accuracy is the major consideration. Refer to the figure. It consists of a inverted tube, which is shown here. That is inverted U tube, containing light liquid whose two ends are connected to points A and B, whose difference of pressures is to be found out. Let the pressure at A is more than the pressure at point B. So the, this is the consideration. A is greater than B. Now let H1 is equal to height of liquid in left limb. H2 is height of liquid in right limb above the datum level. or we can say now inverted u tube is there so below the datum level h is uh, this value that is difference of levels of the light liquid in the right limb right and left limb this is the difference between the pressures s1 is specific gravity in left limb uh, s2 is specific gravity of liquid in right limb s is specific gravity of the lighter liquid h a is pressure at point a and h b is pressure at point b so again uh, for calculating the pressure head in left limb now for pressure head calculation in left limb it will be h a now this will be h a which will be the lowest pressure minus h1 into s1 s1 is the specific gravity of fluid in the left limb then pressure head uh, pressure head in the right limb uh, below the datum line so it will be h b again minus h2 s2 minus h into s so because it is a inverted u tube and the all the levels are measured below the datum line so therefore it will be minus so equating the above heads we will get h a minus uh, h1 s1 is equal to h b minus h2 s2 minus h s so h j minus h b will be equal to h1 s1 minus h2 s2 minus h s so therefore the final equation which we get is h a minus h b it is equal to h1 s1 minus h2 s2 minus h s so this is the equation for calculating uh, inverted uh, u tube manometer pressure head and in this uh, equation uh, we are going to see the value uh, calculations of the vacuum pressures etc or the lower pressures which are related to the differential manometers so uh, uh, coming to the conclusion of the manometers we will see the advantages what are the various advantages of uh, using manometers they are easy to fabricate and uh, they are relatively inexpensive so the cost of the manometers is very very uh, low and uh, they are easy to manufacture they have good accuracy then high sensitivity means for measuring lower uh, pressures they are very very useful because they are mostly used for lower and moderate pressure measurements so they are highly sensitive it requires little maintenance uh, so only internal cleaning of the pipes and measuring uh, the or the keeping equal quality of the manometric liquid that is only the requirement of this type of manometer so uh, like requires little maintenance they are not affected by vibration this is the major issue that uh, they are not affected by the 
vibrations so what will happen is if the vibrations uh, are employed in the system the uh, manometric fluid will still give us the accurate pressure specially suitable for low pressure and low differential pressure this we have already discussed it is easy to change the sensitivity by affecting a change in the quantity of manometric liquid in the manometer Next will be the limitations. What are the various limitations of uh, these manometers? Uh, first is the uh, in the way is uh, it is usually bulky and large in size. Means the, as the particular amount of pressure measurement is increases, the size of the manometer has also to be increased. Being fragile. it gets broken easily means there are chances that uh, for the uh, in some cases it may be broken and then the uh, actual manometric liquid will go as waste readings of the manometers are affected by the changes in temperature altitude and gravity means uh, they have to installed uh, in inclined manner in uh, in horizontal manner but as if there is a change in atmospheric conditions and therefore they will be respond to that atmospheric conditions and they will give us the inaccurate results a capillary effect is created due to surface tension of manometric fluid so this is also a issue that capillary effects are created uh, due to the surface tension of the manometric fluids for better accuracy meniscus has to be measured by accurate means means uh, it it only observes the human uh, error also is there while measuring the uh, particular levels of the limbs of the man manometers so mostly for uh, getting a accurate meniscus Uh, the certain provisions are to be done for the getting the actual meniscus of the uh, particular manometer then after manometers uh, we are shifting our focus to mechanical gauges another type of uh, pressure measurement system so this is the last theory part of our uh, pressure measurement part 3 where uh, mechanical gauges are used for measuring the pressure so the manometers are suitable for comparatively low pressures for high pressures they become unnecessarily larger even when they are filled with heavy liquids so uh, the disadvantages of using manometers is uh, that only that uh, they are used for only low measuring lower pressures but if the uh, 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 actual uh, pressure values are increased then they become unnecessarily larger therefore for measuring uh, medium and high pressures we make use of elastic pressure gauges they employ different forms of elastic systems such as tubes diaphragms bellows etc to measure the pressure the elastic deformation of these elements is used to show the effect of pressure since these elements are deformed within the el elastic limit only so these gauges are sometimes called as elastic gauges sometimes they are also called as secondary instruments which implies that they must be calibrated by comparison with primary instruments such as manometers so the instruments uh, which are coming under the mechanical gauges are mostly used for the laboratory equipments or measuring the moderate and high pressures so going to these uh, types of these gauges uh, there are three types of uh, pressure gauges or mechanical gauges available uh, bore down tube type pressure gauge uh, which involves which implies the principle of uh, the actual uh, using the particular quantity of a uh, pressure measurement system and uh, using the plunger system uh, to or gearing mechanism to uh, make the uh, pressure measurement possible then diaphragm pressure gauge it, it use a uh, diaphragm type uh, uh, a diaphragm for a measurement of pressure and the vacuum pressure gauge which can be used for measuring the lower pressures or the negative pressures so now first we will see bore down tube pressure gauge before going to the theory we will just observe the diagram first uh, see that this lower end this is nothing but a plunger and it is connected where the pressure is to be measured suppose here we are having the pipeline and for that uh, we are going to measure the pressure of the water which is flowing through it so this plunger will give the force to the uh, this elliptical tube or which is also so known as a bore down tube so first see the parts of this this uh, circular uh, element is the bore down tube this is the rack and pinion gear arrangement uh, this is the link and this link is connected to rack and pinion gear and this rack and pinion gear are connected to the pointer so here over this bore down tube we are having the scale also so this scale may be in kg per meter square or newton per meter square newton per mm square pounds per square inch etc so uh, when this uh, uh, plunger will move this will uh, just uh, depending upon the quantity of pressure this elliptical uh, bore down tube will just bend in the uh, downward direction or upward direction due to that this link will be 
link will be changing its position. So if this link will be changing its position, this will drive the rack and pinion gear arrangement. And indirectly, what will happen? This rack and pinion arrangement will rotate this pointer over a suitable scale. And then this scale, this pointer on that particular scale will give us the accurate reading of the pressure moving through this pipeline. Bodon tube pressure gauge is used for measuring high as well as low pressures. The simple form of this gauge is shown in the figure. In this case, the pressure element consists of a metal tube of approximately elliptical cross section. This tube is bent in the form of a segment of a circle and responds to pressure changes. When one end of tube is, uh, which is attached to gauge case is connected to the source of pressure, the internal pressure causes the tubes to expand, whereby circumferential stress hoop tension is set up. The free end of the tube moves and is in turn connected with suitable levers to a rack and which engages the small pinion mounted on the same spindle as the pointer. Thus, the pressure applied to the tube causes the rack and pinion to move. So, as we have seen that when this uh, board on tube is moving, it will move this lever and indirectly it will move this rack and pinion gear arrangement. The pressure is indicated by the pointer over a dial which can be graduated in a suitable scale and we get the actual reading. Second is uh, diaphragm pressure gauge. Now here I will again explain with the help of a diagram. Uh, see that uh, basically uh, this is a diaphragm which is shown that is a in a corrugated form. And when the pressure uh, is to be measured, this diaphragm will change its position from lower end or uh, either it will be pushed in downward direction or always or it will be released in upward direction. So this movement of the diaphragm will be taken up by this, uh, uh, we can say a plunger again. And this plunger will move this uh, rack and pinion gear again and so if this rack and pinion gear is moving again it will be changing its position and this needle will uh, try to measure the pressure which will be again on the scale so this type of gauge employs a metallic disc or diaphragm instead of a bent tube this disc or diaphragm is used for actuating the indication device referring to the figure when pressure is applied on the lower side of the diaphragm it is deflected upwards as we have explained that either it will be released or it will be pushed downwards this movement of the diaphragm is transmitted to a rack and pinion the latter is attached to the spindle of the needle moving on a graduated scale the dial can again be graduated in a suitable scale so this is the way in which the pressure measurement takes place and last one is the vacuum gauges. So this is the last slide of our uh, lecture uh, of the pressure measurement in mechanical gauges, vacuum gauges. So Bordon uh, gauges discussed earlier can be used to measure vacuum instead of pressure. Slight changes in the design are required in this purpose. So see this Bordon to pressure gauge can be used for measuring the vacuum pressure also. In this case, the tube we bent inward instead of outward as in pressure gauges. So the, uh, the bending of the tubes in case of uh, uh, board on tube will be outward or inward. So if it is measured inward, uh, the bent is done in inward direction. We can directly say that uh, the vacuum pressure can be measured. Vacuum gauges are graduated in millimeters of mercury that is mm of Hg below atmospheric pressure. In such cases, therefore, absolute pressure in mm of mercury is the difference between barometer reading and vacuum pressure reading. So uh, in this case, if you have to find the vacuum pressure reading, then uh, the uh, calculation is done in the difference between the barometer pressure and the vacuum gauge reading. Vacuum gauges are used to measure the vacuum in the condenser. So if there is leakage, there will be a tremendous drop in the vacuum. The pressure gauge installation requires the following considerations. First is uh, requirement is flexible copper tubing and compression fittings are recommended. Then second is uh, the installation of a gauge cog and T in the line close to the gauge is recommended because it permits the gauge to be removed from testing or replacement without having to shut down the system. Pulsating pressures in the gauge line are not required. And the last point is the gauge and its connecting line is filled with an inert liquid and as such liquid seals are provided. 
trapped air at any point of gauge lines can cause serious errors in pressure reading so it is always recommended that during the measurement of the particular uh, pressure in in any pipeline it is always recommended that initially the pressure valve should not be turned on first let the system be stable or steady in its flow rate and then the pressure can be measured so guys this is the end of our uh, uh, part number 3 of the pressure measurement and uh, hope you have uh, enjoying our lecture session also uh, there is a request to all to subscribe our youtube channel uh, we are receiving a very good response uh, from your side also if you have any suggestions on our youtube channel kindly comment or kindly message me on our uh, on the basis of any connections or any suggestions required for our youtube channel hope you are enjoying our youtube channel uh, be tuned for uh, various uh, other lectures re regarding the fluid mechanics next lectures uh, mostly we will we are going to conduct between the problems based on the pressure measurement and etc thank you